house. My, it looks pretty. Aren't we ever going back, Mama? There's nothing to go back for now, dear. At least you two are all right. It took me 30 years to build my farm up and only an hour to sweep it away. It won't be so easy on us old folks to start all over again. Any of you seen my sister? She's over with Mrs. Perkins. Thanks, Mrs. Flanagan. Keep away from that tent now. Congratulations, Mr. Perkins. It's a boy. Oh. Is my wife all right? Yeah. <sighs> oh, poor Mr. Perkins had an awful tough time of it. Didn't he, sis? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jones and Joe Larkin are getting married now. The flood busted up their other wedding. They couldn't go around half married, so Grandpa's finishing it up. Do you, Joseph, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish? I do. And do you, Matilda, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish until death do you part? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. Congratulations, Mr. Larkin. Thank you, Miss Warren. <laughs> Here's my wedding present. Never can tell when you're going to need it. Oh. Life preserver? <laughs> <laughs> Band. Paradise Land Syndicate has purchased the famous Gunsmoke Ranch in Arizona. 10,000 acres of the finest farming land in the West. This land is to be divided into 40 acre ranches. Our president, Mr. Phineas T. Flagg, will explain his plan to you. Mr. Flagg. Our plan, my friends, is to colonize Gunsmoke Valley with worthy families from the flooded area. Families who possess the pioneer spirit to forge ahead. No down payment is necessary, and we furnish free transportation to every ranch. Our local merchants are willing to cooperate by selling you merchandise at cost. What's the catch, mister? There is no catch, folks. The only requirement necessary is that you have enough money to maintain yourselves until your crops come in. After that, there's nothing to worry about. Now, all of you who are interested, kindly form a line to the right. What do you think of it, Judge Warren? Mm, sounds good to me. After all, we haven't anything to lose. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> we lost everything in the flood. Well, that's a very good idea. Very good idea. Very good idea. Very good idea. You'll never regret this, Mr. Williams.
Easy, Kalu. Drive a little more carefully. Beat it. Real cowboys, sis. Real roughnecks, Jimmy. Hooray for the flood! I'll say she was. Say, that uh, Paradise Land Syndicate was on the level about bringing settlers out from the flood area. Yeah, I still think we ought to join in with the rest of the ranchers and give that syndicate an option on that thousand acres they wanted to buy from us. Yeah. Well, if that's the way you two feel about it, I won't hold up the deal. Here's an option, Lullaby. Take it to Mesquite and deliver it. We might as well give those poor folks a crack at our land. <laughs> Say, Stoney, how about using your horse? He's faster than mine. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Hi, Jed. I just passed the buses from the east, and I sure feel sorry for them suckers. What do you mean, suckers? Why, don't you know who's behind that Paradise Land Syndicate? No. It's Phineas T. Flagg. Flagg? You mean that crook that was run out of Mesquite three years ago? Yeah, buying land from the ranchers for $2 an acre and charging them old city folks $50 an acre. Holy smoke. Come on, Tucson. We've got to stop Lullaby from delivering that option. Hey, what's your hurry? There he goes. Come on. Nowhere's fast. Good morning, Mr. Jocelyn. What can I do for you? I want to buy a hat. <laughs> How does it look? Not so good. <laughs> uh, better? Why? What's the use? You can't change what's under the hat. How much is it? Ten fifty. 
That is, uh, 10 50. Oh. <laughs> uh, how much for this? To you, six ninety five. Oh, thank you. Uh, the six ninety five is for the cowboy outfit only. It'll be twenty dollars extra for the dummy. You're a sucker if you pay more than ten. Yeah, all right. You can have the dummy for ten dollars. So, say, did you hear what he called me a dummy, stranger? Them's fighting words where I come from. Let me at him. <laughs> now, Elmer, control yourself. Did you deliver that option to Clem? I sure did. The like never got through, though. A couple of suspicious-looking hombres started following me, but I used that rope trick on them that Stoney showed me, and boy, it worked like a charm. It sure did. We happen to be those two suspicious-looking hombres. No. Yeah. Well, how was I to know? We just learned that Phineas T. Flagg is back of this land syndicate. He didn't see him in the office when I delivered that option. We'll find out. <laughs> Well, what can I do for you, boys? You can give us back that option that Lullaby just turned over to Clem here. Well, that's rather an unusual way of doing business, isn't it? Maybe so. But we didn't know you were connected with this syndicate, or we wouldn't have signed the option. Well, you signed it, didn't you? You got your money. Now get out. I'm going to tell those settlers who they're dealing with, Flag. And then if they want to pay $50 an acre for land that you bought for $2, it's up to them. <laughs> you put your money into this project, you'd better have a lawyer investigate it. We have every confidence in Mr. Flagg's integrity. Yes, well, he's charging you a terrific price for your ranches. He bought that land. We're not interested in your running down, Mr. Flagg. He's been extremely fair in his dealings with us. You boys are sure giving the new settlers a fine impression of mesquite. We just want them to know what they're walking into, that's all. Well, all right, but don't start any more trouble. 
Believe me, miss, we're not troublemakers. Do we look like the kind of fellows that would start a riot? Yes, you do. There, you see, too. What? That gal is sure a swell judge of human nature. <laughs> I got a cowboy outfit just about fit you. Would you like to have it? Oh, boy, would I? It's on the horse. Is it all right for me to take it, Granddad? I don't see why not. Come on, son. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, my friends, for your confidence. And I remember that your troubles are my troubles. Now, whenever you're ready to leave, my men will be glad to show you to your ranch place. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You've got to watch these musketeers, Williams. Don't worry. These suckers think you're Santa Claus. <laughs> Elmer, I'm giving Jimmy your outfit. What am I supposed to do, go around raw? <laughs> That's a fine, generous spirit. Haven't you ever heard of Western hospitality? Sure, have you? Don't see you giving away any of your glad rags. <laughs> now listen, young man, just for that, I'm going to give you to Jimmy along with the clothes. My pal selling me down the river after what we've done to each other. All right, but I'm warning you, I'll never say another word. Can I really have them? You sure can. Jiminy Christmas. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd advise you to buy that baby, Bill. Oh, but I like this one better. He's a good looker, but he might not be so easy for a woman to handle. I'll try him out. That horse is wild. Can't be trusted. Has a bad eye. Really? Aren't you a little confused? That description fits you, not the horse. Happy landing. <laughs> My goodness, are all horses as unfriendly as that? Oh, no, miss. Just those with a bad eye. You see, they're wild and can't be trusted. <laughs> hey, miss, don't you want that bay horse? Boys, enough for what you've done for us. The house is all finished now. Guess we'd better run along. Take it easy up there, Lullaby. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm... Oh. Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> well, don't forget to come to the meeting at the community hall this afternoon. The settlers are going to elect a mayor for the new town of three score and ten. They'll be dancing and entertainment, too. A team of horses couldn't keep us away, Marion. Right, Tucson? Yep. Galoot Elmer, I'm gonna change my name. Shh. 
ladies and ladies and gents, gentlemen, ladies and good, uh, folks, uh, I, st I, I stand here before before you tonight. I I, I stand. I, you know, here I am. I, everybody can see you, Elmer. Get on with the speech making. Yeah, everybody can see you. You keep your snoot out of this. <laughs> I, 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 the reason, the reason I'm standing, I'm standing up here is to, to kind of, to, well, I want to bring a guest, give him a mass message. Uh, as, as the feller says, nah, 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 that reminds me of a story. <laughs> oh, it takes me all day to tell it. Well, shall, shall, I, shall I cut loose and tell her? Sure. Well, it, 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 it happened back in Swamp Town. That, that was year. That was year. Grandma. That was year. Grandma catched her foot in a cider press, and and, and plus, plus Paul sent me in town that week for the almanac, and he asked me, he asked me, yeah, if it had come yet. <laughs> and I, so I saw. I walked all. I saw. I walked all week, and one night about seven thirty, I saw. I walked into town, and the day I blamed if everybody in town wasn't in there, wasn't. <laughs> Pound of sleep. <laughs> well, and you know, you know, that's the first thing. The first thing I didn't know, I heard somebody hammering on the old old skinny nails, school bell, and yeah, and yelling, yelling fire. I, so I I turned around, and 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 the, and the Swamp Town Metropolitan's Arms Hotel was on fire, and then the last thing I was in, in by that hand. And then, and then that's, the next thing I know, I turned around, and, and here, here come the volunteer fire department, but that's the bucket brigade. They, they heard him hammering on that old school bell boy, and they just, they just, snuck, they just snuck, snapped out of bed. <laughs> dressed, dressed, and everything from red flannel nightgowns to old potato, 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 potato sack. <laughs> yeah, it sure is funny what some of our best people wears to sleep in. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, no, shut, shut up, Oscar. And then, 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 just as sure as I'm knee high, knee high to a grass and grass and grass, knee high to a grass, to knee high to a chickadee, uh, that, 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 that bucket brigade lined up from the town pump to the hotel in less time than it takes to say skinny ass and ass and ass and ass and ass and ass and Well, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't a skinny ass and ass and ass and ass and ass and they, they, pa they passed buckets of water to douse down that line of firemen, said the dog gone fast. It looked like wounded dog. It looked like a One bucket from the pump clean to the hotel. Nice, 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 nice. Was, we all been through a terrible flood, but now we've got a town of our own, and we should ought to elect Judge Warren to be mayor of three score and ten. <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 you all know this not, this not judge here is a fine feller, and and he, he, he'd be a, he'd be a, 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 a dinger to run our town. Every, everybody in favor of judge being mayor, say us, say us, say us, say us. Say I. I. <laughs> thank, thank you all for the confidence which you have expressed in me. Let us be humbly thankful to Providence for leading us from the turbulent waters of despair into this land of promise. May we never forget the debt of gratitude we owe to our fellow men who, through kindness and understanding, have aided us in our darkest hour. <laughs> now, let's all dance and have a good time. After me, you come first. Would you like to dance to do Could I could I get you to do He means he wants you should dance with him, ma'am. Oscar, did that dog on you? Why didn't you say something sooner? Who oh, me? No. Oh. We got a great big surprise for you this afternoon. We got a, we got a man here. We got a man here that, that's gonna snooze. Elmers are trying to say that among the assembled guests, we got an exceptional fine baritone who's consented to sing a song with the orchestra. Stony Brook will sing when the campfire is low on the prairie. <laughs> This is a surprise, Stoney. Yes, yes, isn't it, why? When the campfire is low on 
the prairie And the branding is done for the day Then we sit by the fire on the prairie And we dream of our love far away I think Stoney's sick Yeah Get out of here, lullaby. I'd rather listen to you imitate birds and animals. I'll be waiting, the dream seems to say. When the campfire is low on the prairie, then we He has a lovely voice, hasn't he? When the campfire is low, on the prairie and the branding is done for the day then we sit by the fire on the prairie gosh you're with the whole blizzard got any more yeah here's a cat and dog fight Don't you think it would be better to do your entertaining inside lullaby? In the ambush, I'll be waiting, the dream seems to say. Shall we dance? Yes, over this way. On the prairie, then we dream of our love far away. Hey! There's a couple of gangsters setting up machine guns in the middle of the street. Machine guns? Yeah. They're surveyors. What's the idea of the survey? Government orders. The entire gun smoke tracks is to be condemned. This will all be underwater as soon as the new dam's completed. What's it going to become of our homes? Why, we hey, wait a minute. These folks just built this town. I guess they'll have to take it up with the state. Well, why, why, that So this is Flag's little ace in the hole. I hold the deeds to the entire tract, Mr. Rankin. The settlers only have sales contracts. Fortunately, this clause is a part of each contract. In the event of condemnation proceedings instituted by the state, the Paradise Land Syndicate shall only be liable for transportation of the settlers to their original starting point. Can you deliver the 10,000 acres within two weeks? Oh, why, of course. Very well. If no delays or complications arise, I am confident the state will okay the purchase of the gun smoke track. Good. Not bad, Flag. Settlers put in the improvements and you cash in on it. Smart business, Rankin. Yes. The three musketeers are headed this way. Go in the back room. I'll take care of this. Smoke Valley was going to be condemned before you brought the settlers out here. You let them slave and spend their savings so that you can demand a bigger price from the state for improved properties. Well, now, aren't you jumping at conclusions? As a matter of fact, I just learned of the project from Mr. Rankin, the chief engineer. Oh, sure. And I suppose you agreed to turn the entire tract over to him? I had no alternative. Hmm. It had sort of gummed things up if one of the settlers had a clear deed to his farm, wouldn't it? Yes, but none of them had. No. But one of them's going to. Make out a deed for Warren's 40 acres. We're paying off the $2,000. My signature isn't sufficient. All three syndicate heads must sign to make it legal. Phineas T. Flagg, President. Charles Duke Madden, Vice President, Reggie Allison, Secretary. Where will we find Duke and Reggie? I don't know. Oh. 
They're in town somewhere. Tucson, you and Lullaby round up Duke and Reggie. I'll meet you in three score and ten, with Flag. Now, Flag, dig up a blank deed and start filling it out. I never did like secretary, so I'll take Reggie. Right, I'll take the vice president. Drop that gun, Stoney. I said drop it and start reaching. Take it easy, fellas. There's a hair trigger on this gun. The least little jar would sort of ruin Flag's budding career. Don't start any trouble, boys. Stoney and I are leaving to take care of a little business. Vice President of the Paradise Land Syndicate? Yep. So what? That's two of them anyway. Well, <laughs> and here comes the third. Sign as witnesses, Judge, then have the deed recorded. Here's your $2,000 flag. Come on. Now the state board will have to negotiate with us before condemning the land. Well, we're mighty grateful to you, boys. We gotta get that deed back. knows when he's licked. Yeah, you ain't heard a peep out of him for days. That's what's got me worried. Well, boys, I'm going to forget business this morning and take Marion riding. <laughs> what are you going to do, hypnotize her? I've got a 10 spot that says she'll go. You're on. Hey, Tucson, let me have half the bet. I need a couple of new shirts. <laughs> All right. But it's a shame to take Stoney's money. Hop <laughs> them bronchies, start reaching. Now this mark. And no funny business. You can drop your hands now. I was just pretending you're some of Flag's men. You want to be careful, Jimmy. Guns weren't made for youngsters to play with. Well, how's he going to be a real Western if he don't learn to handle shooting iron? Ah, uh, this gun won't hurt nobody. It ain't never been loaded. You missed you by four inches, Lullaby. Oh, Jimmy, that's bad shooting. Did he teach you? You do your hunting with a slingshot after this. Where's your horse? I'll get him. <laughs> Is your grandfather home, Jimmy? No. Nope. He and Seth Williams left early this morning for a meeting in town. This is home, though. Say, Jimmy, does Mary ever talk about me? Yeah, she talked about you this morning. Said something about swell. I've got it. She said you had a swell head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stoney, you want to call off that bet? No, just give me a little more rope. We'll give you all the rope you need, Stoney. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
here and I'll see if I can make him talk. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? I was thinking it would be a nice day for a ride. Oh, yes, wouldn't it? Then you'll go? No, I won't. Oh, that is, I'd like to, but I haven't finished the dishes. Well, I'll dry them for you. All right. You're taking an awful chance. Yep, Stoney's a champion. Plates measure, mesquite county. <laughs> I'll risk it. Elmer, do you think Stoney's serious about marrying that little girl over in Mesquite? Which one? Well, that little Spanish dancing girl in the cantina. I thought it was a blonde widow woman with three kids. No, he was just playing around with her to make that tall redhead jealous. Why, Elmer, you shouldn't tell tales out of school. Speaking of schools, Tucson, whatever happened to that little teacher that Stoney promised to marry? Why, some folks say she drowned herself. Of course, the body was never found. Well, all I can say is, Stoney better get himself a bulletproof vest, because that blonde widow woman threatens to perforate him if you don't marry her. Mm -hmm. That's bad. You telling me? Yeah, they're very funny, aren't they? Are they? I never would have thought of you as a heartbreaker, Stoney. Tucson looks more the type. Tucson? Oh, and handsome. Yes, but he's getting very conceited lately. You see, we just taught him to read and write. Tucson does look sort of dumb, don't he, Lullaby? <laughs> Perhaps I'd better not go riding with you. Well, now, Marion, you're not going to take the clowning seriously. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to meet a jealous widow lurking in the underbrush. She might not shoot straight. <laughs> oh, silly. Of course I'll go riding. Well, that's better. Well, if you're sure the horse hasn't a bad eye and can be trusted. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Elmer, how much is five and five? Ten. Right. Why? <laughs> Where's Williams? What happened? We were attacked by a band of masked riders. Well, where's Warren? They rode away with him after tying me up. This is some of Flagg's work. Do you recognize any of the masked riders, Williams? No, but they left a note on my saddle horn. It's a ransom note. Listen. If the three musketeers will leave canceled deed to Warren's ranch at cave entrance to Mesquite Canyon, the judge will be sent home. Don't try any tricks or it will be too bad for Warren. Where's the deed? I'll get it. We'll return your grandfather safely. We'll bring him back, kid. Well, spot for an ambush.
that. We can't risk it with Jimmy here. Come on. Let's beat it. We've got the deed. Send him back, Matilda. Sure, honey, they'll bring him back. It's only the deed they wanted. Look, Tucson. Breathing. Let's get him to the ranch. The stirrup was hammered together so Warren's foot couldn't come out. Is he alive? Yes, but badly hurt. We need some bandages and hot water. Quick. Hold on, can get a wagon ready. We'll take him to the hospital at the county seat just as soon as we get his wounds dressed. Come on, Sonny. Williams and Flag, they. Where's Williams? Well, he was here just a moment ago. He's probably headed for Mesquite to report the flag. I'm gonna get that pair. Hold it, Stoney. If we use our heads, we can trap the whole outfit. How are you gonna do that? Williams doesn't know that Warren is dead. He'll tell Flag we're taking him to the hospital. We won't disappoint him. We'll make the trip as planned. Warren ain't dead. What do you mean he isn't dead? Just that. He's badly hurt. He's unconscious. The Mesketeers are taking to the hospital over the county seat. Fools. Do you realize what this means if Warren talks? He's said to make it look like an accident. I'll take care of this myself. Get the boys together. I will do the thing right. Yeah. No witnesses.
don't stand a chance. Okay. There goes Flag. Medicine he handed Warren. Well, it serves him right. All right, let's learn these fellows up and get back to town. Man, it looks like we're going to have our little ride after all. <laughs> I know I'm going to love it. Hey, Scotty. See, we're Murray and riding with you. You win the bet, here's my five dollars. And here's mine. My pals. Oh, Marion, wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> 